I'm going to start at the top position and let's go ahead. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Steven here with Team Fork, and today I'm going to be taking you through my pull routine. At the beginning of the year, I had mentioned how I was going to start uploading more of my actual routines and not just generic routines that you guys could follow, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for you guys today. Today's routine is a German volume training routine, and German volume training is one of my absolute favorite routines to do. I do it pretty much once every single year, and usually the last three, probably four years, I've been doing it around this time of year, around January, and I was first introduced to German volume training back in 2010 from Charles Poliquin and the first time that I did it was a little bit different from how I'm doing it now. My original split I did a five day split and the way that it worked day one was my push and pull day and then I did some accessory exercises at the end. Day two was my legs and abs day. Day three was a rest day. Day four was my arms and shoulders day and then day five was another rest day and then day six I would repeat and go back to day one. Now, in terms of the actual routine, I've done different splits in the past as well. I've also done an upper lower body split with regard to the German volume training. And currently I am doing a push pull legs German volume training routine, which means day one is push, day two is pull, and then day three is going to be legs. So today is going to be day two of my German volume training routine. In terms of the actual principles of German volume training, it's pretty straightforward. You have to do 10 sets of 10 repetitions using 60% of your one repetition maximum. And that is for the basic German volume training training program. There is also advanced German volume training, which is 10 sets of six repetitions using a load of 75% of your one repetition maximum. And pretty much there are many ways that you could play around with it. As I just mentioned earlier, I have done this pretty much every single year. I, I really love this routine. So I try to do it once a year and it's usually around this time of year. And one of the best German volume training workouts that I ever did, I kind of played around with the 10 sets and kind of came up with my own workout. This was back in 2018. And what I did, I got completely shredded in just 12 weeks. I ended up dropping down to below 6% body fat. And the way that I did that back in 2018 was I did a 12 week program. And the way that I ended up doing the German volume training, I kind of did an undulating periodization combined with German volume training. If you watched my video on undulating periodization, I'll include a link right up over here if you haven't seen that. But essentially with undulating periodization, you have periods of accumulation followed by periods of intensification. Accumulation are your low intensity periods and then intensification are your high intensity periods. So the way that I did it back in 2018 was I did 10 sets of 10 for two weeks, then I did 10 sets of five for two weeks, then 10 sets of eight for two weeks, then 10 sets of three for two weeks, then 10 sets of six for two weeks, and then the last phase was 10 sets of one repetition for two weeks. In terms of that actual routine itself, the way that I ended up splitting it up, I did an upper lower body split. So I was training every single muscle in my body three times every single week because I would do upper body on Monday, then I would do lower body on Tuesday, upper Wednesday, lower Thursday, upper Friday, lower Saturday. So I was doing quite a bit of training and that is why I got completely shredded. But if you wanna incorporate a little bit of German volume training, you could start with the basic 10 by 10, then you could try the advanced German volume training. And then if you want, you could try the method that I kind of came up with myself by doing that undulating periodization and combining it with the German volume training. In terms of the actual intensity itself and the rest period, Periods, the rest periods really are going to depend on the intensity. Generally, the higher the intensity, the longer the rest. With, for this particular routine, for the 10 sets of 10 repetitions, because you're using a load of 60% of your one repetition maximum, anywhere from 60 seconds to 100 seconds would be a good rest period for this particular routine. If you're going higher intensity, let's say you're doing the advanced German volume training, the 10 by six, at that you're using roughly 70 to 75% of your one repetition maximum. So at 70%, I like 90 to 120 seconds rest when doing German volume training. And then if you're going even higher than that, let's say you're doing 80 plus percent, anywhere from 120 to 100, 80 seconds or two to three minutes is going to be a really, really good rest period. And in terms of the tempo, one of the things with regard to German volume training is you really want to focus on slow eccentrics and moderate to explosive concentrics. The eccentric is the lowering phase. The concentric is the lifting phase. So for today's workout, I'm going to be doing one arm dumbbell rows, which I've never done this exercise with German volume training before, but this is, I have been doing the German volume training now. This is my third week. This is my final week of it. So with the barbell, with the one arm dumbbell row, the eccentric is going to be the lowering down to the ground and then the concentric is going to be the pull. Now in terms of the actual duration of the eccentrics, 
the very first time that I did it, I did a 4-0-X-O tempo, and I'm going to be using that exact same tempo for today's workout. I've kind of played around with a few different tempos, but one of the reasons why eccentric training is going to be really, really beneficial is when you incorporate slower eccentrics, it is going to promote more strength gains, and also when you do slower eccentrics, you do remove a little bit of the elastic energy that is stored in the muscle tendon. If you recall from my program design series, elastic energy is energy that is stored in the muscle tendon, and it allows you to be able to generate a little bit more force so when you are performing an exercise let's say a bench press if you were to just drop it down to the chest and explode right back up you have a lot of elastic energy being stored in the tendon and it's going to make it a lot easier to push the weight up whereas if you were to do something like a four second eccentric phase you end up losing some of that stored elastic energy and it makes it a lot more difficult which means you have to use a lot more strength to be able to complete the lift now with regard to the actual eccentrics aside from doing eccentric training you could also incorporate a pause because whenever you incorporate pauses into your training once again you eliminate some of the elastic energy that's stored in the muscle tendon if you pause for one second you basically eliminate roughly 50 percent of the elastic energy that's stored in the muscle tendon if you do a two second pause you're eliminating about 80 percent of the elastic energy that's stored in the muscle tendon and if you end up pausing for four seconds or more you virtually eliminate all of the elastic energy that is stored in the muscle tendon and if you would like to actually do a practical application to see how exactly this would feel, what you could do is take a bench press and just try lowering it to your chest and pressing it. And then you could also try just putting the bench press on the pins and pushing it from a dead start position. And you will see that pushing it from a dead start, even if you're using the exact same weight, is going to be a lot more difficult than lowering it and pressing it right off of your chest. So those are just a few of the reasons why eccentric trainings are really good. Another thing with regard to eccentric is if you look at world-class elite power lifters, the best power lifters on the planet are going to have terrific control of the eccentric portion of the lift. So if you would like to get stronger, you don't want to just bounce the weights off your chest, or if you're doing squats, you don't want to just drop down and jump back up. Ideally, you would want to incorporate more eccentric training. Now, in terms of today's actual workout, the routine that I'm going to be demonstrating today, as I stated, is going to be my pull day. The exercise is going to be the one arm dumbbell row, which I've never done before for German volume training. And in terms of this workout, I'm going to be doing 10 sets of 10 repetitions using a load of 120 pounds so I have 120 pound dumbbell in between my legs I'm also going to be doing a tempo of 40 exo so I'm gonna be lowering the weight down for four seconds and then immediately exploding up as fast as I can and for those of you that have seen my videos in the past you know that I love to work out with a metronome to keep perfect track of my tempo so I'm going to be using a metronome and I have it set to 60 beats per minute because it's set to 60 beats per minute that means each beat is going to be equal to exactly one second which is going to allow me to keep perfect tempo throughout the entire workout and in terms of the rest period for this workout I'm going to be doing 100 set seconds of rest in between each set and I want to try and keep my change up to a minimum I don't want to rest for any longer than 15 seconds between switching from the right arm to the left arm so Again, 10 sets of 10, 4-0-X-O tempo, 120 pounds, four seconds down, explode up, rest 100 seconds with a 15 second changeover between right to left. In terms of the actual workout, I'm not going to be filming the entire workout for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to be really boring for you guys to see me do 10 sets of the exact same exercise. Well, 20 if you include the right and the left arm. So. I don't want you guys to get too bored. And the second reason that I'm not going to be filming the entire workout is because if I do film the entire workout, talking to you guys is gonna drain some of my energy and in between my rest periods, I like to take that time just to kind of relax and meditate a little bit. So I can't do that if I'm filming for you guys. So I'm only gonna film the first, ex or the first set of the actual exercise. And one of the things with regard to the actual rest periods, now that we're on the topic of rest, is one of the things that I like to do when I have the metronome going is I keep my metronome going even while I am resting and one of the reasons why I do that is because I like to instead of using a stopwatch to actually count the beats and for me it almost acts like a mini meditation by counting the beats every single second it kind of just allows me to get in the zone and really focus on the actual training session for you guys if you don't like using a metronome and it just kind of bugs you to be able to listen to that clicking noise you don't have to do it another thing you can do go to getsongbpm.com slash 120 bpm something something like that if you just type in getsongbpm.com it'll take you to the website and what you could do is find songs that are 120 beats per minute and then every for every two beats of the song that is going to be equal to exactly one second so if you don't want to listen to a metronome because that's not your thing then you can also just do that find a song that's 120 beats per minute and just go use your tempo according to the song for every two beats that counts as one second 
That's pretty much it for my explanation though of the actual workout. Now I'm going to go ahead and get on with the first set just to give you guys an idea of how exactly the tempo, the rest periods and everything works. But let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the first set. So I'm gonna turn on my metronome. Again, I have it set to 60 beats per minute. With regard to this particular workout, one of the things that I do when I'm doing my one arm rows is I start I don't start from a dead stop at the bottom. What I'll do is I will start from the top position. So I start with the eccentric phase and then I pull. You guys will see when I go on to it. But anyway, let's go ahead. Oh, and one other thing now that I have these straps on. For those of you that have been watching my videos, you guys know that I'm generally not a fan of using straps when it comes to lifting. I like to use chalk instead, but for the purposes of this particular workout, the straps are going to be absolutely necessary because you are doing 10 sets of 10 repetitions. So it is a ton of volume. And especially when it comes to things like pulling, it is going to really drain your forearms of all their energy. And for me personally, this workout is about strengthening my back. It is not about my grip strength. There are other things that I do for grip strength. So I'm not too concerned with using the straps for this period. I ended up doing bare hand when I was doing the 90s, 95s, 100s. Once I started getting past 100, I can do the first two to three sets without any straps, but then my, my grip strength really starts to give out. So because I'm using the 120s today, this is my first workout of the new German volume training routine with the 120s. And I'm using the straps just because I wanna be able to save my grip strength for other exercises that I'm gonna be doing. But anyway, let's go ahead. This is going to be set number one, so you guys can see exactly how I am incorporating the tempo into the German volume training workout. All right. I'm just gonna move the metronome out of the way a little bit. And again, so I'm going to start at the top position and let's go ahead. and change up the weights nice and quickly. That was one set down, nine sets to go, but that's pretty much it for the workout. You end up doing 10 sets, 10 repetitions, 4-0 exo tempo, 100 seconds rest in between. I'm gonna leave you guys so I can go ahead and finish up my workout. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so I know to make more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you again tomorrow.